I'm standing here this morning just to bring the preacher, bring the preacher to you. Um, this morning is Mother's Day, so we're going to hear from the man of God what the Lord has placed on his heart. It's a young man all the way from Jamaica, way down. God has brought him into this country and this part of ground for such a time as this. Hallelujah. And we know that every word that come from the man of God, it was given to him, not just now, but before he comes in these sanctuaries. Uh, this young man has only one wife. Bless the name of Jesus. One wife. Three lovely daughters. One grandson and one granddaughter. And a beautiful, lovely, lovely wife. Oh, Lord. And he has one son-in-law. This man is knew the word. He studied the word. He eat the word. And he digest the word. So the word that come forth from his mouth today, I pray that somebody in this congregation will turn your cup up. Because this word is coming to break chains, loose shackles, break down barriers, walls that between you and others. And I pray God that as he come, this word will germinate in somebody's heart that someone will say yes to your will and yes to your way. And what better day to make a decision than on a mother's day. So at this time, I ask the congregation to stand while I present the pastor, the preacher of this house, Pastor Robert Alexander. May God bless him. Alexander Robert Young, saints, congregation. Robert Alexander Young, the right honorable, the man of God who bring the word today. So keep your cup up, so don't turn them back down because there's a word in the message for you. Thank you, Deacon. Please stand beside me. Um, you notice anything? So, so, I think he may have a camera in my house. How did he know I was going to wear this suit today? And I look in the congregation and I see a lot of people in blue. Ah, the Holy Ghost is moving in this house. Can you feel the presence? Tell somebody I feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, the question I want to ask is, do you have the Holy Ghost? Because the thing that really makes this uh, possible is the connection through the spirit. So if you don't have the spirit, you won't move. You can be in the presence of God and the spirit is moving and you just stay right there. Because you're not connected through the spirit. We're so grateful for the move of God that we felt and are feeling today. Amen. Lift your hand if you're feeling the presence of the Lord. Play this. Amen. These musicians keep disappearing on me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Uh, we need another one. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, you're getting ready? Glory be to God. Amen. Um, have you been hearing these young men play the drums recently? Come on, let's celebrate Ziani and Israel. And I think there's another little one that wants to play. Is, is that um, Damien? You got to stick close. Amen. Make sure you come to the practices. Uh, we have a visitor here today. Sister Cecile's sister, Carlene Clark, is in the house. Can we just thank God for her? Amen. And our other sister, Carol, is in the house. 
Amen. They're here to support their sister. And let me encourage you to visit with Sister Cecile. Amen. She's in room 206 at the Health Central Hospital. Amen. On this Mother's Day, it'd be good if you just fill that room up with some love and some flowers. And amen. Some Kentucky Fried Chicken would be good. Praise the Lord Jesus. No, she can't have no chicken right now. But um, let's, let's show some love to Cecile. As you remain standing, I, I want us to just pick up, but I won't give you the full dose. I'll just give you the hors d'oeuvres. Is that all right? Uh, as I saw my daughter come up here to the altar, I realized that sometimes you come to church and uh, you don't know what people are going through. You see me, but you don't really know me. You see me, but you don't really feel me. You see me, but you don't understand me. And so we tend to be very, what I would call, uh, disconnected and disattached to people and what they're dealing with. And that makes us sometimes come across as what the preacher would say. We are not uh, empathetic. And so we look through people because we can be touched with the feeling of their infirmities so what may be something that you would be able to handle well i can handle it well uh, my daughter hates it when i shout at her uh, anytime i shout she just curls up in a cocoon uh, she loves it when i effusively give her compliments she's happy but the moment i say robin she just she curls up because nobody likes to be shouted at can i get a witness here and i'm concerned that many times we come to the house of god and we just walk past people sometimes we don't even say praise the lord but can I encourage us today? Let's turn around and just say praise the Lord to somebody. Say, how you doing? Kimani is in the house. My son is home. Uh, I wonder if that's why Jada is here today. Uh, and uh, Sister Sophia's beautiful daughters in the house amen the miracle child can we just wave and just give her a wave amen the victoria is in the house and her handsome dad is there like a protector a bit but he he come really he's protecting her now glory more than ever before amen we thank god for him he, when i was talking with him when 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 they couldn't find her all those years ago time ago he went to new york city looking for her now, that's a good father oh yes and I, I was really taken aback by the efforts he made to find him and let me tell you there's some things in life that are worth fighting for can i get a witness your health is worth fighting for your family is worth fighting for. Your peace is worth fighting for. Your joy is worth fighting for. Some of the things we fight for are not worth fighting for. Okay, there, there's, some, there's some people who have all the money in the world and they are completely mentally in turmoil today. All the money can buy them the peace that some of you have. There's some people in here that have more peace than the richest man in the world. I, I want to encourage us briefly from the same text. And I want to use uh, something to uh, really encourage on this Mother's Day. When, when, when AP found, uh, drew this text, I, I was diverted from my original thoughts. And I just wanted us to, to, to put an exclamation. You know... Sometimes you just need to put an exclamation. Do you know what an exclamation is? A an exclamation is, is something that is almost like a shout. It, it, in other words, look, look here. Someone say, look here. Uh, 
Let's turn our Bibles to uh, the Old Testament. Say Old Testament. Old Testament. To uh, 2 Kings 4. Honey, are you going to help me preach? For about 15 minutes. You're done. But you just started. It's a long text, but I'll just go to the verse that I think I just want you to leave here with. Second uh, Kings four. Verse twenty three. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him, it shall be well. Tell the person behind you, stop worrying, it shall. <clears throat> Father, Put an exclamation point on the entree in Jesus' name. Uh, you may be seated. It shall be well. There are a few things that I want to share with you that jumped out at me as we uh, matriculate with this text. It is that you will get some things in life that you never asked for. Can I say that again? You will get some things in your life that will come your way that you never asked for. Anybody ever got something you never asked for? You will sometimes be favored in a way that will blow your mind. You will go some places that you never thought you could go. You will meet some people that you never thought you would, would ever meet. You would sit in some company that you have to pinch yourself. Am I in the presence of these people? God has a way of coming through for us when we think he has forgotten us. Ha! Ah, this woman was favored. But sometimes your favor is something that has come about because of something you did that you never intended to create the response it did. Because her favor happened because she recognized anointing. Oh, glory be to God. We must know how to recognize anointing. Because what happened was that she, if you remember this woman from verse number 8, that Elijah passed to Shunem where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that oft as he passed by, he turned to eat bread. So, so, so she stopped him to feed him. And that simple act of kindness was going to create a great blessing. Sometimes the greatest things that happen to you are as a result of the smallest acts of kindness. You'd be surprised how the child who says please and thank you is favored by the teacher over the one that walk passes him every morning i am convinced that god looks a lot more on the little things than the big things the little acts of kindness the opening of a door the hey how you doing i just called to see if you're all right nothing more 
one of the most difficult things in life is to have high maintenance friendships. Do you know what a high maintenance friendship is? You don't call them in two days and they dry up with you because you never called them. You know, you have any friends like that? Who get ticked off by the simplest of slights. And you got to repair the relationship over something that you never even intended. But do you have a friend that you haven't spoken to them in 10 years? And you call them and the moment they hear your voice, it's like you were, you were talking for all night last night. It is vital for us in this atmosphere that we live in to have friends and relationships that are not based upon what you can do for me. But it has to be based upon a love that is beyond things that we do. But it is still fed by little acts. One of the things that made Sister Young had to fall for me. There's a place where we used to work like 100, 200 yards apart at Scotia Bank, and I worked at Victoria Mutual. And there's a little place right in the middle of where she worked and I worked called Act Two. If you know downtown Kingston back in the days, the early 80s, 90s, you remember Act Two. Act Two sold uh, muffins and eggs and Stuff like that. So every now and again, I would, hey, Sharon, this is my supervisor. I got to run over to, to Scotia because they knew what I was going for. They were a part of my blessing. Glory be to God. And I would go to Act 2, Jenna. You don't know what I'm talking about, girl. I'll go over to Act 2, and there's a, a young lady there who's now a part of the, um, the, the Martin sisters. She used to work in there. And I'd buy some nice hot muffins, fried, uh, fried dumpling. Fried humbling, amen. And I'll put butter in it and I'll put a little orange juice and it's me this. You know me already. <laughs> and I press the button in second floor, right? Or fourth floor? Second floor. Glory, I still remember. Glory be to God. I'd go to the second floor and I'd walk in with my, my breakfast. Miss, uh, I come to see Erica Beckford, please. And then after a while, the girls, they said, Erica, honey's here. <laughs> and so, and so, those little acts, you know, there are others in the picture, but those little acts of kindness just melted her heart. So when she saw me, she was just, she just, she's she blushing right now. <laughs> Come on, you know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we think it's a big thing, but it's the little things. It, it is the little things. It's the little things. The little things. And it is this little thing. At the time the prophet was in town, she would feed him. She would say, come in and have a bite to eat. And as she did this little thing, she didn't know that a big thing was brewing. I feel in my spirit something big is brewing for Toga. Saints of God in the midst of all the drama going on in our world. And churches are closing left, right, and center. Pastors are dropping like flies. I'm telling you, the little things that we're doing in this community. When I look at these boys up here in the ministry, I'm telling you, these little things are creating a door. Because these are the boys that are going to stay in the church and become husbands for our sisters. They are not going to be in jail. They won't be a part of any prison system. But they will be men of God. Little things. I saw Nikhil as he sat down there. I saw him on his, his phone taking a picture. Is that, that was your boy right, right in the middle. That was your son, right? That boy will never see the inside of a jail unless he's a warden. Because he has been placed in an environment. Ooh, glory be to God. That angels are now watching over him. Because he's ministering in the house of God. Someone say little things, little things. Little things can cause big things to happen. Little acts of kindness. Little deeds of love. I think there's a little. There's a, 
It's a gem. Amen. I don't know it so well. Oh, pull it up for me, somebody. But I'm telling the brethren, it was this little thing that allowed this womb to be opened. There's some people that have some dead stuff, that have some barren stuff, and all God is asking you, not for something big, but for something little. Shout hallelujah. And she said to her husband, now notice, she was doing this in in spite of the fact that she was married. She was married but barren. Had a husband but couldn't produce. And she was not only married and barren, but she was content to be barren. How how can you be married and content to be married? Because there's some times in life where there's some things you can do nothing about. Did she get frustrated? Did she curse God? No, all she did was a little act of kindness to a man of God. And the Bible says, she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passeth by us continually. Let us, she didn't say let me, let us, say let us, make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in there. And it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber, and he lay there, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite and when he had called her she stood before him and he said unto her say now unto her behold thou hast been careful for us with all this care what is what is to be done for thee wouldest thou be spoken for to the king in other words do you want me to take you into a place of prominence because at that time Elijah was the the, 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 the mouthpiece, the seer for the king of Israel. He could take her and have audience with the king. Do you want me to take you to the White House? Or to the captain of the army? And she said, I'm good. When she said, I dwell among me, she said, I'm good. She said, I'm good. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi said, verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. Time had run out on her. She didn't have a legacy to leave, but she had a gift to give. Can I tell you, life will sometimes seem that the way forward is blocked up. But there is always a way. Glory to God. The Bible says the young man said she doesn't have any children and her husband is good as dead. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door of his little chamber. And he said, about this season, he never asked her what she wanted. He just spoke because he was anointed. You got to be careful to listen to the anointed of God. When he speaks or she speaks into your life, you got to be willing to say, yes, Lord. Now notice what happens. I'm almost done. And he said, uh, about, everybody say, about this season. Verse 16. According in the time of life. So, so, so in, in other words, it, it's, it's going to happen when you are in a position to receive it. So he wasn't going out of order. In other words, it, she, she got to be in that time, ladies. You know what I'm talking about. She had to be ready. Hey. 
Oh, somebody say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's going to happen at the right time. In the season of life, thou shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elijah had said unto her. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went to his father, to the preparers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. She will know what to do with his headache. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then. AP already spoke about this. What do you do when your miracle dies in your lap? When the thing that you never asked for is taken from you. You could either get bitter or you could decide that I'm not letting go of my miracle. Today God has challenged us through his servant. Don't let go of your miracle. Who was he talking to this morning? Who was he talking to? Is there something that God gave you that is now dead? Is there something that God has said to you that you're wondering, is it coming to pass? Well, God just reminded you. He said, wake up. It's still alive. It still shall come to pass. That which was spoken over your life is going to receive back life. Last night we were watching the service with... Uh, Dr. Sanguinetti, when we talk about cameras on, you remember that service? And then at the end of the service, uh, Bishop Dane James went up, and then Pastor Jason Dixon went up. You all remember that? And he called us down, and we had this service until about 12 o'clock the night. And he said, woman of God, God says I'm going to heal you tonight. Who remembers that? She's still waiting for her full deliverance. And sometimes when God speaks and it doesn't come to pass, we act like God lied. But it is impossible for God to lie. So if God did speak to pastor, then it must come to pass. So what do you do when you're waiting for your miracle? What do you do when you're waiting for what God has said to come to pass in your life? Do you curl up? Do you backslide? Do you start cursing the church and the pastor? Do you go back to the way you are living? Do you die? No, you get up, hallelujah, in the middle of your situation. And you said, hallelujah, I am going back to the source of my blessing. Shout hallelujah. God gave this word for somebody today. That the miracle look like it's dead. But if you will get up, it will come to pass. Shout get up, get up, get up, get up. Mm. Well, pastor is dead. Don't you see? He ain't got no breath. Pastor, hallelujah. By now he's sinking. Notice what she did. She took the child. You take a dead situation to the morgue. Ask your neighbor, where are you taking your problem to? There's some things that have happened in your life that God gave you a word to. You took it up. And took it to the wrong place. You put it in the wrong people's hands. You allowed people who never had no business touching it. And they have touched it and it's now contaminated. I know this one will last. I know it was fake all along. So instead of her getting encouragement, that thing would have remained dead. But she took it up 
And she took it to the room that was made. She took it to the place of her gift. Because her gift was not going to make room for her. Do you see that? She took the dead child and put it on the bed of the prophet. Ask your neighbor, where, have you, where are you putting your stuff? Where are you putting your stuff? Mm. Mm. Because sometimes you get into some really bad places in life. And you have some friends that you go tell, tell your business. And these friends, they're the ones who told you when you're doing it, you shouldn't do it. But you still go back to them to tell you that what they told you shouldn't do. You did it and now it's gone. What do you think they're going to tell you? I want you to stop and think about that for a second. I got three girls. And I made a pledge, my wife and I, that we would live before them the best way we could. And wherever their life takes them, we will support them. I don't put any roadblocks. Robin's getting ready to go to um, this far country. And I said, go girl, I'm going with you in the spirit. I don't say, you can go, you can make it. I, that word is not in my vocabulary. She can do all things. She can achieve any heights. Girl can become the president of these United States. Stop putting limitations on your children. Train up a child. In the way he should go. If they want to go and play the fool. It wasn't my fault. Because we lived before them. We showed them the right way. We walk before them. And if they want to go and act and live a way, their blood is on their shoulder. Don't let your children send you to the grave with gray hair. Do you remember the prodigal son? When he left home and he said, give me what belongs. The guy had to go liquidate some 401k so the boy could get it. And he walked out and said, goodbye, see ya. The scripture never said one time that father went on Google to see where the boy was. My wife and I will pray. She probably prayed a little bit more than me. For these children. She cried for them. Me said God take them. I fear them. They belong to you. Because there's a thin line. Between faith and worry. I refuse to worry about Robin in New York. At where she's every minute of the day. Can you imagine me? Robin is in New York. And I'm here in Orlando. I wonder what she's doing now. I wonder where she go. She gone to the gym at 10 o'clock. Lord God, she going to walk home by herself. I am going to my bed and sleeping and put her in the hands of God. Who's guilty of that? All oh, you mothers, raise your hand. Worrying about things you can't change. Let me tell you something. When you release the, those kids to the world, it's only God can cover them. Oh God, that's why you need to declare it is well. Shout it is well. Oh, it is well. This woman, this woman, this woman teaches us a lesson. The first thing she teaches us, hallelujah, from the first day, it is okay, hallelujah, to be kind. So be kind. Do you know why some women don't like to keep women friends? Because women tend to be very emotional and they need to be very unkind to other women. If 
a woman wants to get you? Let me tell you something. This woman teaches us as women, we need to be kind to people. She was kind to the prophet. And God opened her womb without her asking for it. Oh, your kindness will open the source of your deliverance. I'm telling you, brethren, this woman teaches us not only that it pays to be kind, but it teaches us that it pays to have faith. Because she takes the child, Kizzy. She puts him on the bed. Come on, Eric. She puts him on the bed. And what does she, do? what does she say? Ooh, the Bible says she went up, laid him on the bed of the man of God. And shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband. And said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses. That I may run to the man of God. And the man of the husband was so dark, dense. Why are you going to him? But it is obvious that the blessing never came to him the blessing came god does use him to provide the seed but the blessing was for the woman are you hear what i'm saying and the bible says he was completely oblivious to why she would go back to the source of her blessing but she said i'm going what she say the bible says it is well did she go into a debate with him did she try to convince him on anything? Can I just share something with you? There's some conversation we should never be had. Sometimes we release our secrets to people. And let me tell you something. Once you release it, if they're not for you, they'll try to sabotage it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, Huzzy, it is well. She gets on her horse. And she saddles the ass. She says to her, her servant, drive and go forward. Slacken not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. Say, Mount Carmel. Oh, do you remember what happened at Mount Carmel? Mount Carmel was the place where the fire fell. Mount Carmel was the, was the place where God answers prayer. She went to the place of fire and blessing. Somebody give God the praise. You see, Elisha was walking in the anointing of Elijah. Hallelujah. So he made his camp where the fire fell. Oh, somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. I won't get into Carmel no more. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say to her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? It, is it well with thy child? And she lied in the flesh, but she spoke truth in the spirit. Because sometimes when you open your mouth as a child of God and tell people if you're sick and you say it is well, they think you're lying. But no, you're not lying. You are reaching into the future, into the realm of the spirit, and you're, you're holding onto the promise of God which is in the realm of the spirit and you're taking it and you're saying it is well she didn't say it shall be well she told her husband it shall be well but she she told Gehazi it is well shout it is well oh God wellness left her mouth and found her dead child and began to work oh God in the dead child's body can I tell you what you say from your mouth will begin to operate in the realm of the spirit I am a living testimony that what you speak has the potential to be Come. Say hallelujah. That's why when I go to pray for people, I don't talk about their sickness, I talk about their wellness. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, 
but Gehazi came near to thrust her away. This shows you the insensitivity of those who sometimes serve with the people of God. Can I tell you, Virgin? It happened with the disciples. It happens to churches today. I remember a few years ago, there's a, 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 a pastor from Africa that came and I went to see him. Um, I won't call his name. Big. He has the largest church in Africa at the time. Over 50,000 people. So he was at this church in Orlando. So, you know, we're waiting. He's there standing by to see him the pastors were there so i went up to talk to him and then this this one of his bodyguards stepped in front of me so who are you i said i'm the, a pastor here in orlando I just want to say hi the pastor or whatever um we don't know you the man looked in my face and told me i don't know who you are so you can't talk to the man Same thing with the disciples. The little children were coming to Jesus. And they came to stop the children. And Jesus said, suffer the little children. We have become so big in the eyes of people. And have made God. We have become gods. We have made bishops and pastors and apostles gods. It's sometimes it is in good, they have good, good um, intentions. But the woman came and fell at the man's feet and Gehazi came, move from the man of God. It tells us that not everybody is sensitive to what you're going through. Not everybody is sensitive to what you're feeling. Not everybody can handle the pain you're dealing with in your life. And instead of saying, instead of putting a, a comforting arm around her, he says, move her away. The Bible says, Gehazi came there to thrust her away. He was going to take her up and throw her away. Somebody worship God. Shout, it is well. Shall it is oh Gulkushata. And the man of God says, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. Oh. She's carrying a burden on this Mother's Day. Who came here with a burden? I'm about to close. God says it is well. I don't know what pain you're carrying, but it is well. I don't know what sickness is in your body, but it is well. I don't know who is talking about you, but it is well. It is well. Shout, it is well. It is well. And the Lord had hid it from me and have not told me. Can I tell you, church, God doesn't tell the pastor everything. He will only tell him something. him Whew. did I not desire verse 28 hallelujah did he, did he said did I desire son of my lord did I not say do not deceive me then he said to Gehazi gird up thy loins take my staff in thy hand go thy way if thou meet any man salute him not and if any salute thee I'm going to take I'm not, I'm not going to deal with this but I'm going to preach a sermon about this boy named Gehazi because here is the man of God giving him an opportunity to walk in the anointing but little did Elisha know that this boy named Gehazi he had no desire for a triple dose of the Holy Ghost. He didn't desire a triple anointing. You remember what Elijah said when Elisha was going up? Oh, give me a double portion of the anointing. And the Bible said that Elijah said to him, you ask a hard thing, but if you can see me, 
if you can position yourself to receive what I got the problem in the church is we don't have enough people are you hearing me positioning themselves to receive from that which God has anointed in the house of God to get it when the mantle is passed oh God oh God oh God I don't mean to offend anybody and nobody in this church but all some of these young men and young people in the church want to do is to use the mic they want the glitter Elisha the man of God he wanted the accolades and the Bible says I know this because when Naaman came when Naaman came to get healing from Elisha the Bible said Elisha told Gehazi to go tell him to go dip in the Jordan seven times till the Naaman didn't want to do that. It was a little girl, somebody say a little girl. A little girl convinced Naaman to go and dip in the river Jordan. But here's the story. When it, when Naaman came back completely healed, are you in the church of God? Naaman wanted to give Elisha a gift. He brought him clothes, brought him money, brought him a lot of stuff. And Elisha says, I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything. Hallelujah, because my gift will not be polluted. The Bible says, hallelujah, Naaman takes his stuff and he goes off with it. And the greedy, ready eye gaze, he waits until the prophet is gone to bed. And he runs after Naaman and said, My Lord and my master. The master said, Leave one of the change of clothes. So that reveals his heart. It only is a matter of time before people's hearts are revealed. I don't think this had happened. This, this hasn't happened yet. The name and story hadn't happened yet. It was after. It happened after. So what does he do? He gives him his staff and says, "You go heal the boy." He had no desire to heal no boy. All he was after, as shown in the story with Naaman, is money the boy wanted. It's possible to be in the midst of greatness and all you see is the sweetness of the greatness and not the sacrifice of the greatness. So Elijah Gehazi goes. And Gehazi passed on before them, laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice. Verse 31 nor hearing wherefore he went again to meet him and said saying the child is still dead so Elisha had to come himself there's some things that only God will do there's only some things in your life that you're looking for an answer for that only God can fix Somebody give God the praise. Lift your hand and say, it is well. I don't know what you're dealing with, but the Spirit of the Lord said, it is well. Oh God, I know you're praying for your sister. Can you just open your mouth and declare it is well? Ah, Yamaho Shed Abah, that thing, that thing that has been bothering you all these years, that problem you have in your house, that that, that wife or that husband or that child, it just won't uh, it's like a bad foot, it's like a, a foot that is fester, sister Scott. Uh, you know those foot that have a sword I won't heal. You may have a sword that won't heal, but declare it is well. 
Glory be to God. Shout it as well. Elijah came to the house. The child was dead upon his bed. He went and therefore shut the door. Oh God, he realized now that the Ge Gehazi would be no help. The woman would be no help. Sometime, beloved, there's some problems. You gotta shut the door. On other people, you gotta shut the door. On circumstances, you gotta shut the door. And face to face, allow God to fix it. The Bible said he lay upon the child, put his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, his hands upon his hands. He stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child was warm. He returned and walked in the house to and fro, went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed. Tell somebody, my child is about to sneeze. My victory is about uh, to make a sound. My deliverance is about to make a sound. Somebody shout, uh, oh, glory be to God. It's about to make a sound. Say it's about, that's mine. It's about to make a sound. It's about to make a sound. It fell from here. Hallelujah. It's about to make a sound. It's about to make a sound. It's about to make a sound. That thing that was dead is about to make a sound. That business that you thought wouldn't come off the ground is about to make a sound. That guy that you were looking at for five years, you thought he wasn't interested in you. Yes, he's still interested. He's just been watching you. Hallelujah. He's about to make a move. He's about to make a move. That circumstance that you thought wouldn't come to pass uh, that house that you wouldn't think would come to pass uh, oh hallelujah I wish I had a church up in here that career that you wanted to do but you didn't think it could come and uh, it's about to sneeze uh, say it's about to sneeze it's about to sneeze Oh, glory be to God. It's about to sneeze. The child sneezed seven times. He opened his eyes. He called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. So he called her when she was come. He says, take up thy son. She went in and fell at his feet. Bowed herself to the ground. Took up her son. Tell somebody your miracle just came alive. Your miracle just got up. Your dead situation just came back to life. Shout it is well. Tabernacle of glory. We've been through a lot. But God told me to tell you this morning. On this Mother's Day. It is well. Shout it is well. Stand to your feet, it is well. It is well when peace like a river attended my way. Oh, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Oh, glory be to God. It is well. It is well. It is well, the woman teaches us. It is well when we give acts of kindness. It is well when we act by faith but you know what delights me about this woman in spite of what she went through she was a worshiper this woman was a worshiper hallelujah sometimes your worship may not be in the lifting of your hands but your worship is seen in your obedience oh God Almighty what we need in this hour is Christians who are walking in obedience to the word of God I want you to think about this. The child died in front of her. Think about the trauma of having a lifeless body in your hand. But look at the faith to get up. Oh God. The faith to, first of all, she had to take the child to the room. So the process to your deliverance is going to be painful. You're going to have to walk with some stuff that is going to embarrass you. Walk with some stuff that's going to cause you grief. But if, as long as your mind is made up. Hallelujah. As long as you're fixed. 
Oh, glory be to God. She lays the child on the bed. She has the faith to get on that horse. She has the faith, God. Telling him I'm right. Where are you going? I'm going back to Elisha. Lift your hands. I want you to reach into the realm of the spirit. Take back your son. Take back your child. Take back your healing. Take back your identity. Take back your deliverance. Do you remember the day you walked into church and you felt the Holy Ghost? The way you felt, hallelujah. I want you to re recover. Somebody say recover. Oh, shut up. Recover your position. Recover your place. Look at yourself and say, I shouldn't be here. This is not me. I should be at another level. It is well. On this Mother's Day. Lift your hand and say, it is well. It is well. We're done. It is well. It is well. Say, the, the, say it from your lips. It is well. You meant that, that relationship? It is well. Oh, God. That child that hasn't spoken to you for years? It is well. Oh, yes, Lord. It is well. Declare it. Declare it. That, 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 that daughter or that son who has become a homosexual? It is well. In fact, they're even married now to another woman or to another man. It is well. Oh, God. Open your mouth. Oh, Shetai. And declare it is well. It is well. Oh, yes, Kimani. It is well. It is well. I see you. Let me hold that. I'm seeing some stuff in the realm. Let me tell you, it is well. Oh, because sometimes we make some decisions that take us out of our place of destiny. Sometimes we walk into the wrong, oh God, we listen to the wrong people and we make the wrong choices. But I hear God say, he's turning it around. Say, so Lord, turn it around for me. Turn it around. Turn it around. Uh, some of us have made some decisions uh, that have been financially beneficial but spiritually detrimental. We used to sing a song back in the day, Vivian. You can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can have the whole world. But give me Jesus. You can have the whole world. But give me Jesus. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. You can have the whole world. But give me Jesus. You can have the whole world. Anybody who wants to be saved today, come right now. You're walking outside of God's will and purpose. You have left the presence of God. Come now. The Lord has been talking with you. Come. Come right now. I want to give you 60 seconds to come. Glory be to God. And then I'm going to ask Minister Ben to come and close in prayer. Come. Come. The waters of baptism are open. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, come. Come right now. It is well. It is well. It is well. Oh, hallelujah. It is well. You know why? Brethren, you don't know about tomorrow. Uh, Bishop Stewart got up last week Sunday morning. Glory be to God. Getting ready to go to church and never made it. You're saying, I I'm out, Pastor. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. You don't know about tomorrow. We got clothes for you. We, we, we'll, we'll give you clothes. You don't have to have any clothes. We got clothes ready. Let me tell you, while the blood is still running. Listen, when you die, you can repent. Pastor, you're trying to scare me? Yes, I am. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Repent 
and be baptized. Every one of you in the name. What? House 13, 12 years old when I got baptized. 12 years old. Uh, as younger than you. Mm -hmm. As a little boy going to. Where was I? I was in high school. I was going to Wilmers in first form. Amen. And I went down to that little church. A little zinc church. Ooh, glory be to God. I was a Methodist choir boy. I remember, amen, after I left the Methodist church, my, my pastor's name was uh, Reverend Richard Young. He had my name. And I remember, he, I'll never forget the day, he found my house. I was 12 years old. The pastor found my house. And he says, Robert, I heard that you're going down to the Pentecostal church. I couldn't believe that the pastor had left Spanish Town. His church was right in front of the prison. He left Spanish Town in his office to come to find out that he heard that I'm now apostolic. You go on with those speaking in tongues and say, Yes, sir, I'm baptized and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm not coming back. He jumped back in his brown. I, 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 one day I'm going to pull up the car he drove. One of them old cars with the, with the, the, the it's just like one of them old Vauxhall something. Parked. He, he, the thing about it, he never parked. He missed my house and parked in front of my neighbor's house. And I went out and I said, it's me. Reverend Young, you come to see me? I couldn't believe that. A 13-year-old boy could be visited by the pastor. About 10 years later, I still had friends down there. I went back there to preach. And I climbed. You know those Methodist churches, you got this place that you go up to. So I, first time in my life, I climbed up there and I opened the Bible to Isaiah 53. And I said, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I preach the gospel. I preach repentance and baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. They never end up inviting me back. <laughs> what is your excuse? When you walk through those doors today, you heard the gospel that Jesus died. He loves you. The blood. I'm good. Come, Brother Glenn. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy. You are indeed a good Father. You're a good God. All things you have done well. We thank you for the opportunity one more time to hear your word and to allow our ears and our heart to continue to treasure up your words. We thank you for the word that came through the man of God this um, afternoon. And Lord, we pray that your intended purpose, your will be done in the hearers that they will go home and they will be changed. Lives will be changed through the power of your word. We pray a blessing over each and every person, those who are in on social media platform, those who are in the sanctuary today, that as they leave, Lord, that you would cover them. We pray for your angels to be an envoy to carry them to and fro wherever they may go at this time. Lord, protect us and bring us back safely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Lord bless you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hear me, church. Hear me, hear me. Hear me. As I was kneeling, the Lord said to me, why will you walk away today? Tomorrow is not promised to you. Oh, God. Somebody came up before me vividly. I, I, I'm not going to say who it is, but I'm telling you. Let me tell you, today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Let's begin to worship. Mm -hmm.
You made big plans. You got big plans. You got big plans. But I'm telling you, oh God, be careful of an interruption. give you another minute to come to Jesus come 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 Bridget come come pastor I'm not ready come 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 unto me all ye that labor come come leave Babylon Leave that place of sin, that den of iniquity, and come. Leave that place. Leave that place. I hear God say, leave that place. Leave that place. That place where you think you got everything in, in control, but it's not in control. It just takes a little slip. Yes, Lord, do it for somebody today. He who weary come home earnestly tenderly Jesus is calling calling oh sinner Before I say, um, we want to thank those for those who are watching online. Thank you for watching. We pray that you receive the word from the Lord today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's raise our hands. But, but before, 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 if there's somebody, you're standing in the church, and there's somebody beside you.